here's a actual pretty accurate measure of water depth versus clock time. The procedure, first procedure that we've used in the project is to sketch a graph with these points and then pick three representative points <coughs> and use them as a basis for a quadratic model. And the procedure should be very familiar to everybody, uh, very straightforward. Uh, if t equals 8 and y equals 138, our quadratic function of the form y equals at squared plus bt plus c becomes, well, we plug in 138 for y, so we get 138. Now I've got y on this side rather than this side for reasons that uh, become apparent. And I start off with c, then b, then a. So I've got these three uh, terms in reverse order. Okay, so the y is 138. I plug in 8 for t. Well, c doesn't have a t dependent, so c is just c. bt is 8b, because t is 8, b times 8. And at squared is 64a, and I think by this point everybody understands that anyway. Okay, then I plug in 60 and 48, 68 and 48, and I get this equation. Now, don't take this to the uh, jewelers or anything. Um, don't take it to the bank. Um, I did this square in my head, so uh, matter of fact, that can't possibly be right. Uh, actually, that should be 4684. I believe that might be right, so maybe I better put a 4 here. And I'll correct that one over there when I get to it. Um, so, anyhow, our three equations give us then the matrix equation that you see here, very straightforward. And we expect that this matrix might be invertible, especially since this is real world data. And non-invertible matrices are actually rare in the real world. Um, that, well, it depends on your situation, but if I just put random numbers into a 3 by 3 matrix, it's highly unlikely that I'm going to get a determinant of zero. Everything would have to match up just right. You could think about that, but I'll, I'll, I'll simply say that in this situation, if you think it through, you'll understand that this matrix is almost certainly invertible. And then especially since this is a quadratic model and we put our data into a quadratic model, that makes it even more certain that this matrix is invertible. <coughs> the only way this matrix wouldn't be invertible, in fact, um, would be if you had different values of y for the same value of t. Okay, well, anyhow, here's our matrix equation. Now, we expect that the matrix is invertible, so we expect that we can find A, B, and C, which if evaluated to complete precision, and um, plugged into this form to give us our quadratic function, would then, for these three points, give us an exact match. In other words, when the function is evaluated, it would give us the exact number that we have for y. So if I put 68 into that function for the values of a, b, and c that we get here, okay, I get a function, plug in t equals 68, and what I get on this side will have to exactly equal what I have here. And similarly for the other two selected points. Now there's no guarantee that these points are going to be fit exactly by the model. Um, but if our data is very accurate, they'll probably be pretty close. Assuming that the thing that we're observing really is modeled by a quadratic function. Now in the context that we've developed for doing regression analysis, I'll just observe that this is a transformation from R3 to R3. In other words, ABC is three numbers in R3, three-dimensional Euclidean space, 
38, 40, 20 can be regarded as uh, a vector in R3. So we're effectively mapping a vector in R3 to a vector in R3. <coughs> and we're finding the vector that maps onto this specific vector. A picture of that, our transformation is T of V equals AV, where A is this matrix. Then our equation is of the form AX equals B. X is the ABC vector of the three parameters, and B is the vector consisting of our data values for Y. For this particular matrix, we expect that the determinant is non-zero, so that the null space of A would be just the zero vector, and the nullity of A would be zero. the vector space that we would be mapping with this map would be R3. Well, the fact that the nullity is zero tells us that the rank of the matrix, or the dimension of the row space, is three, so that the row space of A would be R3. Now, if you haven't seen this part of the analysis, you can kind of ignore what I'm talking about. And we've used the notation rho of A. This is a Greek letter rho, and this means, the, just coincidentally, uh, uh, the rho space of A would be all of R3. In that space, in that case, the column space of W, which is another R3, because we're mapping R3 to R3 with this matrix, the column space would be um, the rho space of A transpose, of course, uh, but we're going to call that the column space. It's the image of the row space over here in W. And that's going to be all of R3 because the column space of A has the same dimension as the row space for reasons that we've understood for some time, I hope. Um, okay, so here's our situation. Now, what this tells us is that we expect to get a perfect match. We expect AX to perfectly match our B vector. Now remember, in general, if you've done the, uh, done the work for the transformations, I mean, you, you understand the more general model um, for doing the regression uh, analysis. In general, we have to project B onto a subspace of R3 and projecting it parallel to the null space of A transpose. Now, you might not remember all those details, but that's what we do. Uh, in this case, though, AX and B are identical. Okay, in the more general case, in the case we get, if we use all five equations that we can get from this data, uh, AX uh, could not be expected to match B. And we'll explain that when we talk about this. So, in this particular case, this is what we have. Uh, and this just puts it in to that broader context. Now, we're going to talk about what we do if we've got all five data points. And I'm going to eliminate this part of what we've written out. 